some people's were melted or just really not keeping their form other people just had like little grittiness to it it just wasn't really the consistency of a lipstick that it should be focus there it is i don't know what that is i think it's plastic this one's a little scratchy but not as scratchy as the other ones so i have sophia and then perfectionist but the codes are the exact same this has never happened in my history of um this industry and i guarantee you it'll never happen again because no one does this like this is absolute insanity that is straight up either metal or it's glass because it's reflective look look as you guys can see from that clip i mean it's pretty self-explanatory what this video is going to be about I really didn't want to make this video, but I felt the need to just because I'm a chemist and it's important to point out things when they don't seem right, especially when it's in my field of work. Hi guys, if it's your first time here, I'm April. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about Jacqueline lipsticks. It's a lipstick line that we've been waiting for for a while and it finally dropped and I will say a lot of us were pretty disappointed. I have not bought the lipsticks. I do not plan on buying the lipsticks. Yes, the things that I see online scare me, but even more the CGMP, which just means the current manufacturer and good practices behind the actual product, scares me. So let's get into the video, shall we? First thing I want to say is this video is going to be entirely all facts. No hate. This is entirely just me pointing out the truth. I'm not going to touch on things that I'm not sure about. I will only speak on things that I know as a fact. I'm not here to bash anyone. I'm here to support women and business owners. I'm all for it. But at the same time, if I feel that there's no integrity, I will not support your brand. And lastly, I'm going to be very knowledgeable throughout this video. I'm only speaking through something that I know is true. And I'm not here to lead anyone astray. I only want to educate people and make people aware. First of all, I do want to say that I'm really upset that this is even happening. Like, really? It's 2019 and this, something like this is happening and this is from a YouTuber that's super credible. Come on, you know, Jacqueline, I've watched Jacqueline since, probably since she started. And I'm kind of sad, but at the same time, she's not a victim here. You put yourself in this position. So we have every right to hold you accountable for not coming through with this product. I'm gonna go through everything she kind of touched on her video. I'm gonna compare that to the actual facts as a chemist from my knowledge. And uh, yeah, you guys just form your own opinions about it. She did say her products are not expired. They went into mass production the same month as products launched. And according to the paperwork that she showed on the screen, it shows that it got approved by the FDA in 2017. And there's nothing wrong with that. You have at least two to three years before products are considered expired. So that leaves her at, 2019, this is 2019 right now, that leaves her at only like what, six months out before her products are fully expired. So that in itself is false. That product should have not gone into mass production knowing that it is about to expire, really. So usually, when, especially with the batch that is not common, and I'm pretty sure that lab, I don't know what lab she worked with, but I do want to say from what I know, we place products under two years stability before we even produ produce it, especially within the brand new products. I have no idea how it works. The only time that we do mass produce a product that we just recently received is only when we already have something like that in our database. So we already know how that product works. For something like that, it should at least be under two years stability to see how that product will work and react over time. So that way you have a more detailed idea of, you know, the lifetime of that product if they did that they would have for sure picked out all of these uh inadequacies in the product she does have a spec sheet and on that spec sheet it just kind of shows that everything confirms to the national brand because she said that she did compare it to the national brand and i just want to show you guys my spec sheet that we work with at my company when i show you guys hers and i'm going to show you guys ours so 
When we make spec sheets, even though we do work off of national brands, we always, always still have a detailed description of what every spec should look like. So for order, even if that product doesn't have an order, we still say order is not available. If it's a fruity order, we'll put it in there. We'll put the viscosity, we put the pH. It's not just something we'll say, oh yeah, confirms to national brand. So what is national brand? That doesn't tell me anything as a chemist. So that's already like another red flag that I saw on her paperwork. As far as the time spent working on the product, she said she spent five years working on the product. Um, if you worked on the product for five years, come on now, Jacqueline, you could have caught that. You could have definitely caught all, like, come on, you couldn't have caught hairs and black moles. I'm so sorry, but there's no way that you worked on something for five years and you still came out with all of these problems. It's just not acceptable. Okay, she said that the black dots are oxygen bubbles that were lifting up because the oxygen didn't fully escape. I thought that was hilarious because, I mean, that is almost not possible because, I mean, where's the oxygen coming from? Lipsticks are made from waxes and oils. Oh, I guess she's talking about the oxygen from the air. Mm, no, not at all. That's not some, That's definitely not what it is. I mean, I don't even need to give you guys like a, a scientific explanation to that, but that's not, that's definitely not what it is. I, I just, I can't wrap my head around that. And she talked about the grittiness. She said it was from the, she had vats that spins and mixes ingredients. The lipsticks weren't broken down properly. Um, and that's why there was grittiness. But then people found glass and muds and bumps. And I mean, this is a classical example of a product that was just kind of left around for a long time. And it just obviously speaks a lot about the lab that she worked with and a lot about her negligence as a professional. Let me just quickly cut into this video and say, you guys buy from a credible resource. I would never buy Kylie Cosmetics because what? Kylie is not a chemist. She's not a dermatologist. I don't care how much money you have. I need you to be credible. I'm not going to come here and say I'm an artist because I value the work, the art that goes behind the scenes to create that type of work. I feel like we should be more aware and start supporting people that have a lot of substantial value to add to us. Look at someone's credibility before you make a purchase from them. What knowledge do they have to create a skincare line, to create a cosmetic line? Just because you know how to do makeup doesn't mean you know how to make products. I think that if you're a makeup artist, like I said, I keep saying in my videos, stick to who you are. And I'm not trying to put anyone in the box here. If you really want to do that stuff, then put the work in. It shows when you create a product and the product is not up to par, as in this classical example right here. You clearly are just putting your name behind a product and trying to sell it because you have supporters and followers. That's not okay. If you want to sell a product, then educate yourself. Immerse yourself 100% in what you're doing. Don't half-ass anything because then you're going to land in something like this. And I'm hearing that people are wanting to like recall the product. I'm actually surprised that this product has not been recalled. It blows my mind. And also just judging from Jacqueline's track record, the Becca Lunch, the Morphe Vault collection, where, where is it? Hmm? Clearly, she's not putting in the work. This is someone who's constantly playing on our minds just because she has this platform. You guys need to be more aware of who you're supporting. It just blows my mind that we're still supporting someone like this. I, just, I can't even wrap my head around it. Okay, moving on. She also talked about the fuzziness that was found, the white fuzzies that was found in the actual product. And let me just say, why was this even acceptable? Like, it makes no sense that this was acceptable to use white gloves with fuzzies. And then she said that the steroid gloves that are FDA recommended for use in production of cosmetics uh, was smearing the actual lipstick. Um, I think not. I mean, that would have been, if anything, that would have been better than freaking using like gloves. And why are you just finding that out now? Why did you not know this before? Like you're saying you did an investigation to find out all of this information? Really? Why did you not pay attention to that before? Anyway, that glove should have not been used and then she mentioned using like cloth of uh, fiber gloves to clean the vase that contained all her lipsticks, the vase that was spinning her lipsticks. That's, that's another way that the white little feathers went into that. Jacqueline, girl, if you're gonna lie, at least give us a good lie. Like I do not believe that at all. She tweeted to a customer something about quality control. Hold on, let me look at the tweet. I'll probably put it up here on the, on the screen for you guys. So she said, if any of you are receiving lipsticks 
like this. Please note that this is not hair. My factory used brand new white gloves to do quality control and they shed all over my product. Which is weird because she said they used it in the packaging of the components but now she's saying they use it to do quality control which clearly she has no idea what quality control, control is because quality control is basically after we do make a batch. Okay, let me just give you guys a rundown of how products work. So we Obviously, batches come from the lab, and when the lab makes a product that they're happy with, they send it to us, the process team. We then make the product in the pilot team, assuming, I hope that she did have a pilot team, so, which is another thing. She probably tried to like find a cheaper alternative, and the lab that she probably used didn't have a pilot team. That's where I come in, is we make the pilot. After we make the pilot, which is basically a scale up from you know the lab batch, we scale up to the pilot batch. And then this pilot batch is what gets sent out to QC. QC then tests this pilot batch, make sure it meets everything that's claimed on the spec sheet. So order, appearance, pH, viscosity, all that stuff needs to match. If it comes back from QC as conformed, they send it back to us and then we start to fill for stability. So when we're filling for stability, that's when the QA team comes in. I think she's met QA when she was talking about QC. So QA is the guys that come in while we're filling that product that has past stability and they make sure that the, the components match. You know, they make sure that, you know, the weights match. They make sure that appearance matches. We're using the right components. All that stuff's important. And QA does that, not QC. So when QA passes that, the products, uh, we fill the products and then take it to stability and that's when we wait the two years to make sure the product matches everything. And that's still directly connected with QC and micro and all that jazz. I mean, the problem could have come from the raw materials. I don't know if she knew that, you know, when the raw materials are received to make, obviously in this case, the waxes for the loop six, they'll go through QC, QC make sure the raw material meets specifications. I mean, it's a whole process that we go through to make sure everything goes smoothly before we proclaim a product safe and good to use to the public. Because come on now, this is a lot of money being spent. It's a lot of reputation at stake. So if Jacqueline really wanted, to make this product a hit. She had every way to make it a hit, but no. I don't want to say she was out there shopping, you know, living her best life. I don't know, I'm not saying she was, but I mean, the product kind of speaks for itself. But I don't know what she was doing the whole time in five years, because clearly you weren't paying attention to your products. If not, you wouldn't have had this problem happen. <laughs> She also talked about how her lipsticks are melting and breaking, and she said it's because it's an emollient-based product. I literally was watching her video and I was dying laughing because a lot of people are gonna buy this shit. Like, wow. Wow. That's all I have to say. And it's crazy because a lot of people are gonna start to like psychologically like think it's true just because they live in a hot climate, it's an excuse for their lipsticks to be breaking. Again, this is just a classic case of not putting that product under stability and seeing how long it could withstand at first temperatures. If she put those lipsticks at least two years under stability, we would not have this issue. I promise you. Just today at work, we have put a product under stability for three months, which is like the first time that we pull a product just to check it and make sure that it's, you know, it's okay. And QC actually found that there was greediness. <laughs> I feel like honestly, she went to some cheap lab because she's trying to be cheap. If all of her statements are true, I really believe she went to a cheap lab. I had no idea how to make proper documentation of cosmetics formulation and she paid for what she got. That's honestly what I believe and I do believe these products are expired. I don't believe the mold, the mud, the glass and all that stuff that you're seeing is anything from whatever she's claiming. I do believe that there's more to that. There's more to the story for sure. I'm not going to make this video any longer. You guys just be mindful of who you're supporting again. Make sure that you're supporting someone that has knowledge and is well-rounded in the product they're putting out. I'm not in support of celebrities putting out products. They have no clue how it works unless they're going to immerse themselves in that product. Um, I'm all for women empowerment, you know, entrepreneurship, but please be well informed in Educate yourself. Don't just put stuff out there just because you have a name because it's gonna bite you in the butt and it's gonna hurt. 
all right you guys thank you so much for watching if you have any questions go ahead and leave it in the comments below and i'll be sure to answer them uh go ahead and subscribe and yeah that'll be it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one bye